Hello and welcome to a little tutorial on how to use switch statements in Swift. So switch statements are pretty close to if statements in that it, it's kind of a way to say hey if this certain thing is happening then run this bit of code. You can kind of make decisions with these switch statements. So um, we're going to use a little bit of a fun example to learn this. Uh, we're going to be doing anger management. So we're just going to walk through a little program that you know, says, depending on your anger level, I have these words to say to you, sort of a thing. So, uh, I made a little playground, and to kind of show how cool switch statements are, I kind of made my program with if statements. Um, so, here in my program, we make a constant called anger level, and it is a uh, string that we can change from like rage, to maybe be annoyed, something like that. And essentially what happens is, uh, these if statements say, hey, if the anger level is rage, we need to say this. If it's frustrated, we need to say this. If it's annoyed, say this. If it's peaceful, say this. And if it's not any of those, we need to say, hey, I'm not really sure what it is you're feeling. Okay, So pretty simple example, but if you'll notice, this is very messy. Like It's kind of hard to pick out, okay, where is it? Oh, now it's equal to rage. Oh, frustrated, because these things aren't always the same length and it just it's a little bit hard uh, to read at least I think this looks very cluttered and uh, this is a great use for switch statements so I'll kind of do the switch statement down below and I think you'll see the light about why this is so cool so to use the switch statement just type switch and then the name of the variable that it is you want to no do the switch on so this will make more sense as we go through but I'm gonna put in this anger level string so I'm gonna say anger level Okay, and then we do the curly brackets all around this. And then with the switch statement, we have what are called cases, where you know a case is saying, hey, if the case, if it's the case that anger level is equal to rage, we want to do this. Or if it's equal to this, we want to do something else. So for example, we'll say case and then put in quotes rage. And then after you do that, you do a colon. And then below there is where you type the code that you want to happen. So in this case, we'd want this uh, print statement to happen. Okay, So there you go. This is a very rough switch statement. But you'll notice this isn't running. And the issue is because it says switch must be exhaustive, meaning that a switch statement has to handle every possible case that could happen. So uh, on the switch, we're saying, hey, if the switch or this anger level string is set equal to rage, do this code. But... What if it's equal to annoyed or peaceful or just something else entirely? Well, we have to have a place to announce what will happen. So switch statements have a really cool thing called default. So we just say default space colon like that. And this is the, the default gets run if it's not equal to any of the cases above. Okay. So now that we've done this, you can see we have a totally valid switch statement. Um, so I'm going to keep adding in uh, the other ones in here, and I think you'll start to, to see the light on this. So I'm going to say case uh, frustrated. Okay. Do our colon, then put the code down below that we want. So I'm going to grab this and paste. And I'm going to say case annoyed colon, and then you want to do the code that's connected with that. And for the last one, we'll do case. This is probably the best one, peaceful. Hopefully, we can get our anger management people to start to feel this. And we will print out this. Here, good for you. Have a cookie. I think that's good. So now that we got all of this, um, you'll notice this switch statement does essentially what all these if statements do. So for example, uh, if we change annoyed to rage, you'll see both of these are going to print out, I need you to breathe in and out slowly. Or if we say peaceful, hey, look, you get a cookie two times. So after looking at this, hopefully you kind of see that this switch statement is just a little bit more clean. At least it is to me. You know, it's it's We can just say, okay, if it's rage, it does this. If it's frustrated, it does this. If it's annoyed, it does this. And um, whereas with these if statements, I mean, if statements definitely have their place, but, you know, kind of just doing this if this, well, if it's not that, then check this one and check this and this and this. To me, this is much more simpler to read. Um, so 
that's why I, I think in this case it's a, it's a great use. But let's talk about uh, other things you can do switches with. You can do switches with any type of value. So here we're doing it with a string, but if we wanted to, for instance, say, uh, you know, let age be equal to 26, then we can do a switch that says, you know, do a switch on age. So this is how these switches work. You're saying, okay, for this variable or constant, I'm going to do some different things depending on what the case is. So for age, we can say case, uh, case uh, 10, right, with the colon, you are 10 years old. Uh, case 20, you are 20. years old just like that and then we better do our default one that just says uh, oh I forgot to do print statements around this I'm just typing out strings that's probably not good uh, good get that and then if not we'll just say print you are some age all right, make sure you spell default correctly. It's an important thing. Um, but yeah, you can, you can see how we can do a switch on, in this case, an int, right? An int number. Uh, and so it's really just the case is essentially the same way of saying is equal to. We're saying if age is equal to 10, do this. In this case, we're saying if anger level is equal to rage, do this. Right, so right now, because this is 26, it's not 10 or 20, it does this one. But if we change this to 10, uh, voila, now it does this one. If we change it to 20, it will do the next one. So, um, yeah, switch statements, in my mind, very close cousins with if statements. And um, they can kind of clean up your code and just make things easier for you to use. And now, something to note, if you want to do multiple lines with a switch statement, so if the person's 10, maybe we want to print out uh, multiple things, like we'll maybe say, print something else. This is a great age, by the way, or something like that, right? Um, so if you have these multiple lines, it's totally fine. You can just do that as much as you want. Um, it's not like you only have to have one thing in here, and if not, you have to have curly brackets or something like that. So I know in some programming languages, that's a thing that if you have a case and you, can, you should only do one line here. No, in Swift, you can do as many lines as you want. In fact, if we change this to a variable, although this could get dangerous, <laughs> we could say age is now equal to like 15 or something. Let's see if Swift even lets us run this. Well, it does. I want to see. I wonder what happens if we change this to 20. Oh, yeah, it exits right out. We don't even get that one, but... Anyways, I've probably gone too far into switches, um, but that's the basic gist of it. The switch, you say, okay, I want to do a switch on this constant or variable, and if it's equal to these things, run that code, and if not, we have this default that says, well, just if it's none of those, do this. So hopefully that helps you, and uh, if you have any swift questions about switches or anything else, please hit me up in the comments, and I'll try and help you out.